Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so pleased to see you here. We have a new, uh, very nice academic year in front of us, so I'm so, so pleased to see you again. Uh, um, two months without meetup was a bit long, probably. Um, so uh, the meetup of today will be about um, how data science, how analytics impacted the sales and marketing environment. We're very pleased and proud to have uh, some nice speakers who are specialized in that area today. Um, so we, we, this is the agenda of the day. The only thing that you have to remember of this, about this agenda is that it will be finished at quarter past nine and at 17 past nine we will be in the Opinio drinking beer. So that's, the only, that's, that's what we have to focus on. So uh, this is our objective. 17 past nine, first beer in the Opinio. And between that moment and now, what we really want to do is try to fill that, that, that gap with some interesting talks. Um, so the first talk uh, um, will, will, will probably be Claudine, um, and then it will be followed by, by Günther, and then we will have two more technical talks. Uh, one uh, talk about from the Le Coutre brothers, and the other is the, the, the talk of Cal Sablon. Um, about, about the community, just who is new, who has not attended uh, a meetup before? Great, welcome, very warm welcome to you all. Um, let me then, in a few words, tell you what we are doing so that you know if you, 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 you it's worthwhile staying here. Huh? Um, in a few words, what we are doing is, uh, we are a community of practices of people, uh, grouping people who are specialized in, uh, in data. Uh, that's how we like to call ourselves. Um, and we are building this community of practices a bit like the Atomium in Brussels. Um, we call ourselves the Brussels Data Science Community. And the energy and the, the real fuel of, the, of this community is uh, our volunteers, uh, people spending time trying to understand, trying, uh, sharing their knowledge also with, uh, with, with other people. So it's a volunteer-driven organization. Who is also a volunteer, Frank? I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been uh, created by, by master brains. Um, some of them are in the room. Sam is here. And can you raise your hand so that people, and, and Bart is here. So we have at least three master brains, three out of the five here. So it's good. We have the quorum. We can continue. And uh, we still have the same mission. Even after a year, we still want to do some data for good. You know, trying to change something using, using the knowledge of, of how to use data. Yeah? So our mission is to inspire, to educate, to help uh, scholars, that meaning academic people, but also professionals to at apply data science in a, in a challenging way and as much as possible uh, in a positive way. Yeah? So that's the mission of our community. Volunteer driven, we come together. The importance here is that we want to do hands-on as much as possible. One of the topics that came out as number one in our survey is that people of the community want, combine, want to do hands-on exercises. So, so that's very, very important, that hands-on exercises. And we try to do that in nice places, be it at Vlerik or in a nice garden and so on. There are a few rules. Um, we, we like to keep it as free as possible. Free in the meaning from that, you are, that it's open and you can say whatever you want. Uh, but also free in the meaning that it, it should not impact your budget a lot. Uh, the objective is to, uh, to be open. So we welcome even commercial organizations. That's OK. Uh, as long as they don't pollute the environment with advertisement on how good their product is and how big their company is. Uh, fun is key. Because if we spend some time in the evening and during the weekends, then it, it better be fun. Yeah? Because it's not only because you learn a lot that you can't have a, a lot of fun. And, and sharing by having fun is much, much nicer. These are some, stat <laughs> some statistics. Don't look at it. Just, just remember one thing. We, we, we are by now the, the biggest one, the biggest data-driven organization in Belgium. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And we were that already about 
six months ago or something like that. But uh, um, I have to take this. This is my mother. Yeah, Günther. That's perfect. In the day, as you will. Yeah. That's good. That's our first speaker. <laughs> so you can give him a warm applause when he comes in. <laughs> um, it, interesting thing is, is um, uh, on, on, this, on this slide is the fact that you could help us a lot if when you see something on, uh, passing on Twitter or on our Facebook page or on our, our LinkedIn group, when you s just by just by forwarding, liking, uh, you know, showing your interest on that topic makes a huge impact. Not emotionally, of also emotionally. I, 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 of course, it's nice to have your, your, your post liked. But for example, on, um, on, 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 on Facebook, when somebody likes a post, the post goes from from 50 views to 150 views. And when there is another guy who, who likes the post, then, then Facebook makes sure that there is you know, 700 people who are seeing that post. So you are really helping us just by, 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 by pressing that button, that like button. It, it, it allows us to share that information in a much broader way. Yeah, so that's quite important. Um, and then we have this huge challenge. Um, Google's decided that uh, only as of 500 followers, you could have a, a, a real name on your video channel. I think for the moment we have seven followers on our Google account on our video <laughs> challenge. So uh, if you could check it out and, and, and do that. I don't know how, we, I, unless we buy those 500, which could would only cost three, three dollars or something like that. But I don't want to, to play that game. So take a look at our, at our uh, YouTube channel because that's the one that is going to grow. The Palace channel that we, 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 we have had until now is dying out. So the bad news about Parlis is that Parlis is stopping with their, with their services. They did that as soon as we bought that ser their services. So we <laughs> was quite, well, I don't know if there is a relationship, but um, they are stopping. Good. So you can raise your hand if you have a question like, like they did there. Everything's, you know, um, last year in, in March, for the, um, this is for the new people who don't know our, our community. Yeah? So, so we did a, a, a data innovation summit and we thought that we would have like 150, 200 people present and then AXA was so kind to say, oh, why don't you, oh, 150, oh, use our auditorium, it's a nice auditorium. But what happened there is suddenly these, uh, because we, we were thinking of inviting both the academic world and to mix that academic world with startup world and to mix that startup world with corporates and to do this what's what they call in uh, government like a multiple elix approach where you have uh, from all the areas of the ecosystem uh, uh, represented that event really uh, exploded and we had to stop registration when when it hit 520 uh, people so uh, on that event People were standing in line uh, to, 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 because the, the room was only for 300 people and people had to wait to come into the room that somebody left the room and things like that. So that was um, probably our, our biggest success until now was uh, hosting, uh, not hosting because that was access success, but uh, organizing it. Um, and that made us think that we are taking a lot of risk because during, uh, on that day, if something could have, would have gone wrong, uh, it would have been us, the, 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 the five guys that you saw in the beginning who are taking all the responsibility on their shoulder. So to, uh, to change this, what we have done is that we have created now a legal structure on top of it. And that legal structure is an ISBL, and visit way, so that at least now we can have, we can have a good insurance. <laughs> and uh, so, so, so to, just to cover us uh, for, uh, from those risks. Yeah? So we now have this legal structure, we call this legal structure the European Data Innovation Hub. And it's there, and it's about, uh, the European Data Innovation Hub is, is, is nothing more than the same thing as we were doing today uh, and yesterday with the, with the Brussels Data Science Community. The only change that you see there is that now we have office space, so we have a huge 
uh, office space, again in the Alpha, in the AXA building, where people who are on, doing some flex work and don't want to spend their time at home, but also don't want to spend their time in, in the office, can come and flex work in, in our office amongst data scientists. That's one thing. So we have co-working spaces. And we have uh, also uh, an incubator for startups. And you will see in a minute uh, that we already have uh, five, six startups that have uh, joined our, uh, our, our office space. Next to that office space, we had, uh, there, there is a, um, an education center. And you might have seen that we uh, already have started giving some, some data science uh, training. When I say we, it's, 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 it, I mean the, the community. So it's anybody in the community who is passionate about the subject and wants to share that, their, their knowledge. And they can either do it in the evening or they can do it, do it, do it during the day. So that's basically the concept. If you are passionate about a sub subject and it is data related and you want to share it with the community, then we can provide you with the best training rooms available and you can give your training on our training room. Also, what we add on top of that, or even below that, is that we want to have this e-learning environment, and we want to be able to capture all this knowledge and to share it also in a virtual way. That will probably be the biggest challenge. As an e-learning platform, we are using iMind X from, uh, from iMind, yeah? Um, and we are, we basically, we are looking for a driver to, 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 to take that challenge on and, and, and to, to put the first trainings on that, on that um, e-learning platform uh, or learning management system. So if you, if you are interested, if you know how it could be done, um, just, just give me a call. Um, and another interesting thing about there, about the uh, learning platform, is that we have talks, we are now have different talks with uh, schools like Ritz, who are, who are uh, cinema schools, uh, uh, with whom we are working with now and talking about how do we film an e-learning an, uh, uh, an e course? How is that done? The funny story there is that the, uh, the, 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 the head of the film institute uh, said, oh, we, have we haven't got that experience, we can't help you. And, and that we had to tell them that we are an open community and the idea is to learn and to share and then, this was the best environment to, 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 to learn how to do it. So, uh, so and for his uh, students, it was probably the best that he could do to organize that kind of course. So that's how we are moving forward. Um, we are still promoting innovation. We are inspiring companies more and more. We have better and better contacts with, uh, with, with companies who, who are starting to promote us and to support us. Yeah, the idea here and that's a little secret. Um, the idea is that the bigger Belgian companies will uh, support us financially as well. Yeah? And they will receive in return access to those training, access to that uh, e-learning environment. Uh, so that's, that's the kind of, uh, of deal. We will also help them if they want to do a hackathon, to organize that hackathon for them. So that's the deal that we have with bigger organizations. And, and, and I'm, I'm quite surprised with the success that we are having uh, with the talks that we are doing now because they, they, they really see the benefit of having a, a, a professionally run organization like this. Um, also, the, what the hub does more than the, than the Brussels data science community is that we also help other communities to join and to become successful. So we're not only promoting our own community, but we are, we are also helping other communities and you will see their names in a minute. Let's move on. Um, here are some, some examples of communities that, that we support. The, this is all very new. Huh? Don't, uh, the, you know, don't, the, the, don't blame me if I hadn't told you yet, because this is so new. Um, for example, the, uh, the Google Dev Group, uh, we only saw them l last week. Uh, Café Numérique is also very new. Um, the, uh, the, the union or the group of uh, information architects is also a new contact that we've had. Um, so, uh, so that's a good example of how the hub can assist other communities to, uh, to, uh, to work. And we have our startups um, that we want to support. In our community, in our hub, uh, we, we have a group of, of, of gentlemen uh, who are well be be beyond the 50, and we call them the, the, the 50 shades of gray. 
And the 50 Shades of Grey is that group of experts that will help those startups to become more successful. Yeah? Uh, these guys are uh, um, eager to share their knowledge and, uh, and are eager to help the startups to become <coughs> com a commercially viable environment, uh, co company. So the, here are the examples of startups. We have startups that, that come out of the banking world. We have a startup that comes out of uh, a, um, a, a consulting work from McKinsey. We have a startup that is going to do a product around cyber, cyber security. Uh, but all these startups are data minded. They believe that with data they have a leverage and if they understand how the data, the data work, then their product will be more successful. So that's the whole idea. If you have a startup idea, why don't you come and sit, you know, uh, like one, one day a month or one day a week in our environment and, and, and work on your startup idea or in the evening, you know? Why don't you come and work in the evening in your, on your idea? I will pass that because you know, okay. Uh, a quick word about training and then, and then I, I, I will uh, um, give the microphone to, uh, to Günther. There are two types of training that we want to promote. We are, on one side, we want to promote the trainings that we give to management and where we want to, to help management to understand the value of data and how important it is and how, how to become more data driven. That's one, one challenge and, and, and that kind of training that we are organizing. And then there is another type of training and that's about the, the, the data science skills that we want to promote and, and how to become a better data scientist. Uh, and there are different ways to do that. There are more classical trainings and they also, uh, and that's the, what you see there below, uh, is what we call MOOCs. A MOOC is a massive open online course. But what we do on top of that is that we coach them. So meaning that we register to a MOOC with, with a group of people, like 15, 20 people register to follow this online course at the same time. And they meet up once a week and we make sure that there is an experienced guy present to assist them if they have questions about the class they have been uh, looking at or the videos they have been looking at uh, during the week. Yeah? And that's quite important because um, there is one starting today and it's about machine learning. If you don't know anything about machine learning, it's a perfect time to register. Uh, take a look on the different communication channels we have. Uh, it's a, this first one is a five week it's a, some people say it's an easy one, uh, but still it will, be, it will need a lot of coaching to, to pull you through that, uh, the, all those different exercises. Because even though it says that you only need six hours to complete it, six hours a week to complete the course, if you are professionally active, you still have to find those six hours. You know, six hours is nearly a full day. So, uh, so what we do is uh, we, we make sure that each Tuesday, and you can already take your agenda and block each Tuesday until the end of the year. Each Tuesday, we are doing, we are coaching a MOOC, yeah? And we will go over from the, we will start with an easy one from Microsoft on an Azure platform, uh, and then we will move on to a more complex one from Stanford University with Andrew Eng using R and, 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 and so on. And then we'll make it complexer and complexer, yeah? So book, book your agenda each Tuesday because it starts today. One thing that the bigger corporations liked about us is that we're also helping uh, doing things for good, helping uh, uh, companies or helping NGOs, and also helping the people who want to learn about data science. So uh, um, this is the slide that, 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 that explains how we do it. But, but uh, last year we worked on uh, Médecins Sans Frontières and we had a lot of fun doing that. We also organized hackathons. And uh, last year we did a hackathon for DataKind in London. Thomas went there, I think. Where is Thomas? Uh, disappeared. We did uh, Hack Epilepsy with, uh, with Hendrik and Wart and, and Sven. Where is Sven? <coughs> with Sven. Uh, and they ended third. So <laughs> on the Hack Epilepsy. Um, and, and this year there is an, there is a, uh, there's one starting called Gold Rush, 
could be interesting to, uh, to play on, but we are, we are looking for somebody who wants to take on the group and say, okay, I'll, I'll coordinate that Gold Rush Hackathon, yeah? We, we are there to help, but we can't, we can't be the locomotive for each activity that we do because otherwise we're not scalable. So, uh, so, so it's also your community. So if somebody says, I want to do the, the, um, the Gold Rush Hackathon, it's time to do it, yeah? Good. I'm nearly finished, Gunther, sorry. Uh, let's move on. Are there any managers in the room? Um, so we are, we, are, we are doing a hands-on exercise uh, uh, to teach uh, and to make managers feel what uh, predictive analytics is all about. It takes place either on the 1st of October, uh, and that's already next week, so that will be the, you will have to decide quickly, or on the 3rd of December this year, yeah? So that's the first thing for the managers. What else do we have here? We have an official opening, and we are very proud of the speakers that we managed to gather for that official opening. Of course, we have Frank Costa, the CEO of AXA. We also have Alexander De Croo, who will be present. Bianca De Bas uh, from Brussels will be there. And we also have uh, an expert from the European Commission who will be there. You will receive the slides. And, and when you, when you ta take a look at the slides, I'll make sure that all the buttons work. So if you register to reserve your seat, it will work when you, see, when, when you get the slides, OK? I hope to see you there. Already uh, 95 people registered, and we have room for 120, we agreed. So, 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 so uh, it's nearly um, fully booked.